Okay. Thanks uh, for this introduction. Um, yeah, so um, I my presentation will be um, basically an overview and updates about the Mesospin project. Um, and um, uh, as you already know from Fritjof's um, um, presentation, the whole thing started in 2015 uh, by Fabian Voigt in uh, Fritjof's lab. Um, and uh, currently there are 16 uh, known setups because it's open source project. Uh, there are may, maybe some setups we don't know that exist. Um, uh, most of them in Europe, but also some in uh, US and even in uh, Singapore. So um, there are among these 16 setups, there are uh, quite a lot of microscopy facilities. Uh, uh, so six, uh, including one company owned. Uh, and um, we try to keep uh, track of published papers current on our website. Currently there are 20. Um, maybe more, again, we may not know, but if you use, uh, we would be happy to hear about it. You use Mesospium. Uh, so the last um, latest published version, um, uh, Mesospium version five, um, these are the specs. It has optical resolution of about two micron in uh, lateral uh, dimensions, X, Y, six micron in Z. And uh, NA um, depends on the magnification you choose from 0.1 to 0.25. Uh, it is um, fast, as uh, you could see in the demo um, before uh, uh, before lunch. Um, so mouse brain, depending on magnification, takes um, from 30 minutes to a few hours. Um, it, it is compatible with all clearing methods and a big uh, range of sample sizes. The current cost is uh, about 170K in parts, and most of this is laser. Uh, as, a, as a developer, I'm constantly uh, facing the uh, challenge which is issues to fix first. Uh, and I try to formulate my principles, uh, especially in the software. Uh, um, um, so the first principle is to minimize repetitive error prone from user side and boring tasks. So the, um, you know, the, this uh, tries to make user experience easy and uh, error-free. And second principle is that software upgrades and developments are scalable and cheap, but the samples and user time are unique and expensive. And that also uh, helps um, to focus on features that matter. Uh, one of examples that of recent developments is um, how, um, a way to manage a multiple channel, multiple illumination, multiple tile data sets. Uh, in big teacher, uh, sorry, in 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 Mesospeam, and um, of course, one option is to save every um, uh, stack into its own file. But there is um, a more optimal way to do this, and um, uh, you can do this in a big teacher. And basically, um, I developed a library called NPY to BDV, which um, uh, allows writing such multi-dimensional data sets into um, H5 format that is compatible and drag and drop uh, ready for processing in a Fiji Big Stitcher. And this is an uh, example of um, such data set on the right. So you have um, uh, a very user-friendly overview of your data and um, very nice and very responsive visualization even for very large data sets, hundreds of gigabytes. Another um, uh, recent uh, um, um, development in the software is uh, addition of autofocus, which I also demonstrated um, in the demo in the uh, hands-on session. Um, uh, and this is because focus is uh, probably one of the important, most important factors affecting image quality, as you may know from you know taking your images with DSLR cameras. And um, in, my, in Mesospin particularly, this uh, uh, requires usually uh, quite a lot of manual tweaking. Every time you change um, uh, magnification, you need to adjust your focus and, uh, and so on. And uh, depth of field and hence the, you know, the range of uh, focus um, uh, error it uh, very strongly depends on the magnification. So as you can see here, 
at zone one, if you use uh, like a standard formula, the depth of field is uh, almost 250 microns, but at uh, zoom six, it is only about 15 microns. So it's, a, it's an order of magnitude. And so to um, simplify, uh, you know, the user experience, um, I implemented the autofocus um, uh, feature in the software, which um, uh, works quite straightforward. So uh, it, within the uh, given interval from the current position, it takes uh, a number of snapshots of the different defocus um, uh, um, positions, and then it fits with the Gaussian um, distribution and finds the peak of the Gaussian. So there are this is your new position. And uh, then you can just accept it and the microscope uh, detection arm moves to that position. And you can re repeat it several times. Uh, it's, it's very straightforward. Uh, be besides improvement in software, uh, we also have a new hardware uh, project. Uh, it's called Benchtop Mesospeam. Uh, and uh, it is shown here in CAD model compared to the previous version. And it is a much smaller footprint. Um, it is a lower cost. It uses um, air objectives or telecentric lenses um, uh, and larger um, sensor cameras, for example, Photometrics Iris 15. And it is much easier to assemble, so uh, fewer uh, custom parts are needed. And its cost is uh, almost half uh, of, of the previous version. Um, and um, just a, a few snapshots of how the assembly looks. So the excitation um, arm is, uh, the left excitation arm, for example, is just this. And the red color shows uh, parts which need customization or modification. Everything else is just off the shelf. Uh, the detection arm uh, is uh, also rather simple. So it is, um, of the shelf telecentric lens, which you can buy, um, 3D printed holder and a camera and um, either a filter wheel or fixed filter or this um, motorized um, filter uh, 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 arm. And uh, now the, the big question here, when we start um, switching the detection optics, uh, from what we are used to, which detection lenses are good? You know, how can we make informed decision about good or bad uh, choices of the detection lenses? And um, one of the characteristics of uh, every lens is that it has field curvature. So if you have a planar object, um, when it is focused uh, onto an image, uh, the image is um, always curved. Uh, and uh, this is true even for very high end objectives and lenses. And for light sheet microscopy, this is especially um, important because, uh, well, our excitation plane is planar. Um, so uh, we want also a, a planar image on the camera sensor as, as planar as possible. Uh, if uh, it is curved, then we will lose the resolution at the image corners. So one term from optics uh, I introduce here is SAG, uh, which basically is the uh, amplitude of this curvature across the field of view. Uh, so um, we can uh, test field curvature uh, and at the um, um, existing uh, um, objective that mesospheme microscopes use. Uh, this is 1x uh, Olympus objective, different zooms. You can put um, a, a, a grid, uh, a distortion target from Thorlabs, and um, you uh, see, for example, here at 2x that uh, the center is sharper and the sides are uh, blurry. But how do we quantify this? Uh, you know, how we, do we put a number? What, what field curvature do we have here? Is it good or bad for imaging? And we, so uh, I, I uh, recently uh, designed a little test rig. It uses uh, a Thorlabs Ronchi ruling uh, test target. So if you zoom in, uh, this, is, this looks like this. So it's just um, uh, very high resolution um, pairs of black and transparent uh, um, lines. And you can attach it with rubber band uh, to, uh, for example, the uh, 
outer cuvette, uh, align it manually so that it's perpendicular to the optical axis. And then you can um, um, do the imaging stack at different uh, focus uh, positions uh, with your objective. And um, when you um, take uh, the stack for each Z plane, you can divide the image into um, uh, a certain number of tiles. And for each tile, you can calculate the contrast, you know, the difference between the you know, blackest and whitest uh, regions of, the, of, of, of each tile. And then you can uh, map this contrast across the field of view, across your image for every uh, focus position. Uh, and um, uh, now, now uh, th this becomes uh, more interesting because uh, essentially you have a three-dimensional map of contrast for your lens uh, with a very simple setup. So for example, at zoom 1x, um, uh, you have very high contrast here in the center, yeah? uh, and then it drops down uh, to the edges and uh, uh, there are some surprising things that the contrast field is not spherical, as you, you probably would expect, and it's not even axially symmetric. Then you can also slice um, across uh, field of view vertically and horizontally and plot this, uh, uh, again, uh, as a function of focus position. And this gives you the curvature of, of, your, of your field for, the, for, for a given lens. And you can also plot a maximum contrast and see that you know, some portions of the uh, of your lens actually give higher uh, contrast than uh, others. So this this uh, puts a, a hard number on on the field curvature for your lens. For example, in this case, the uh, this this sag yeah across field of view um, is uh, about uh, 120 microns. Uh, and you can repeat it for uh, different zooms and um, compare uh, the zoom settings. And this is a comparison table. You can see when you increase the zoom uh, that the field of view becomes flatter. So for example, this is 1.25x and this is 3.2x. Um, so, and it, it is uh, flattest at uh, uh, 6x. Uh, and but even uh, at um, uh, high zoom settings, uh, some portion of the image is uh, less uh, has less contrast than uh, others. So this this is um, basically uh, uh, means that your re image resolution is uh, here is lower than in this in this region. So how can we compare uh, lenses now? Now it's it becomes quite easy. So this is. The Olympus 1X uh, lens at zoom 125, and this is um, the telecentric lens we are um, now uh, using for benchtop. Um, um, one of the candidates is called the Lensagon from German company, Lensation. And you can immediately see that uh, across uh, a similar field of view, the uh, the uh, curvature is uh, much smaller. So this is, this is the, uh, very flat here, and very curved here. So um, to put a number um, across you know, this field of view, about 10 millimeters, the curvature in Olympus 1X is almost 70 microns, uh, and the curvature at Lensagon is 10 microns. So uh, we now have a tool to compare and quantify lenses and uh, make informed decision uh, what lenses to use. Uh, now, um, if you are new to Mesospin, um, um, you can uh, actually uh, check uh, uh, some uh, existing setups near you and uh, maybe arrange a collaboration uh, with people who already built it. Um, people who build it are usually uh, very open to share and collaborate, um, but please uh, keep in mind that you need to uh, give incentives and credits to them. It's, it's a lot of work. Um, uh, if you have a lot of samples and you like Mesospeam, uh, just build your own. Uh, we have all the documentation online and we can help you. 
um, important thing here is because it is open source project and kind of high end do it yourself. Um, investment in people, you know, in a, in a person who will be responsible for it long term is uh, important. Um, it's it, you know, it's not just uh, one one button system with uh, technical support on call. Uh, so please keep this in mind if you want to build your own Mesospin. Um, so not only hardware, but also people uh, who run it and who know what they're doing uh, is important uh, here. And um, if you're using Mesospim a lot, we really encourage you to contribute improvements in hardware, in software, in documentation. Just use your GitHub, familiarize uh, with, um, with the GitHub interface, um, um, create pull requests. We're happy to see your contributions. Um, do we still have time? Um, not much and okay. we have some questions also okay um so i will um um uh, just uh, show one uh, uh, last uh, uh, slide that um, we intend uh, mesospim not only for our uh, local community here in zurich and uzh but also for global community so we develop uh, also youtube tutorials maintain mailing list collaborate with companies because yes it is open source but you can still uh, 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 you know, basically earn money if you um, contribute something to the project or if you use uh, this open source project for your um, for profit facility. Um, uh, the only thing not encouraged is to close source. Um, and um, yeah, we uh, also uh, try to do our best at education and outreach and develop optics, um, uh, hardware, software, electronics, and so on. So I would really like to thank uh, a lot of people involved here. Uh, of course, Fabian, uh, Philip, uh, and Fritjof, who were uh, you know, the pillars uh, of, of this project, and um, many collaborators uh, who uh, made this possible and who uh, um, present today uh, and uh, they shared their uh, uh, samples very generously and uh, um, so uh, yeah Mesospim is not only hardware and software it's also a platform and a community so please join and contribute um, yeah so this is my last slide uh, with more information uh, where you can find documentation sources youtube channels and uh, twitter account thank you Thank you, Nikita. Um, Marco Pende was asking about the use of Endor cameras and specifically Endor Neo for use with Mesospim. Do you have experience with those? Hmm, no, no, I, I, I haven't used them. And uh, Peter is commenting that he really likes his analysis. Um, he's asking for the contrast dependency across the field of view. Uh, you plot this also as a function of focus positioning F. Not sure whether, this, how can you make sure that the Mesospim is using the ideal position for imaging? I guess he's referring to... Uh, oh, well, this is taken care of either by manual focusing or by autofocus. Yes. Uh, Christophe Lamy is asking, is the open top version in development in depth? Uh, no, currently we don't have the capacity to um, continue this. And... I was wondering with this analysis that you're showing here and you, you put your target before the, uh, the cuvette, is this an issue that you, in reality you would actually image through the cuvette and through the immersion medium before you hit the target? Uh, so yeah, there will be spherical aberration, um, but uh, it uh, affects um, the entire field of view uh, pretty much the same way. So this is, and also lenses are, I mean, of the shelf lenses, they are almost always designed for air. So it's, it's kind of fair to also test them in air, but the same um, analysis can be also done by dipping the grating into whatever medium you have. So it's, it's not a problem. 